Hello, my travels, Scotland. I have lived in England and Wales. However, by birth, I'm half Scottish. So this part of the trip was very special to me. Adrian's Wall, going back to Roman times, overlooking the Scottish borders. It's amazing when you realise it stretches all across England for 135 kilometres. It's interesting, the name means break in the wall, and it was built with stones from Hadrian's Wall. Our first stop is Irving in Ayrshire home where my father was born. Originally the Cross Keys, it was the home of my grandparents and family. Located on the quay and moored outside of the pub was the wonderful old tug George Brown. <laughs> the captain and crew all drank in the pub and they would take me out to sea. Unfortunately the George Brown is no more, but they were wonderful childhood memories. Close by, they have now built the Scottish Maritime Museum, which is well worth a visit. entrance with the pilot tower dating back to 1906 which I remember well with this picture taken back in the 1940s Irvine has miles of beautiful sandy beaches Fantastic! Oh, the beach hasn't changed. It was a fun day as they had a dragon boat race in the harbour and a good crowd all having fun. Walking towards town with Harbour Street. Irvin, the new the old
It was great and we found a good bed and breakfast to stay. Its wonderful horse chestnut tree reminded me of the game of Conkers dating back to around 1850. The first recorded game was on the Isle of Wight in 1848. Leaving Irving, we drove along the Firth of the Clyde to Glasgow. It's a lovely drive with views across to the Isle of Arran, Danoon, the wonderful sight of a Clyde steamer. They have a wonderful history dating back to 1812. We hadn't given ourselves a lot of time in Glasgow, which was a pity, as it turned out to be really nice. Famous street names. It's a beautiful drive as you head into the trussings. We found a great place to stay in Calendar. I first visited the Trussocks, Loch Lomond, when I was 14 and have always remembered its beauty. scenery is breathtaking. a medieval castle with an interesting history. The 
the kitchens. The marks on the wall are where the cooks sharpened their knives. It's interesting to explore with the rooms and views from the roof. Well worth a visit and they provide a sound system that gives you the history of the castle. Stirling is a lovely little town. As with most places in Britain, we were greeted with beautiful flowers. <laughs> Great coffee. One of the largest and most important castles in Scotland. Several Scottish kings and queens have been crowned as Stirling, the Great Hall. See the beauty of royal life in the 1500s. It's interesting, Mary Queen Scots was crowned at Stirling in 1542. The Royal Chapel. It really is interesting to explore. The kitchen. the Queen Anne Garden. In the field beside the castle, you can see the layout when they had a royal garden party. It was really interesting and we were some of the last to leave. They did let us out.
Robert the Bruce, King of the Scots from 1306. The Wallace Monument on a hilltop near Stirling. Wallace has an interesting history dating from around 1297. <laughs> a family of ducks were busy on the shore. The eastern end of the lock with the SS Sir Walter Scott. Heather and wild flowers. The pictures of Loch Archery with its calm waters I find just magical. With the reflection of the trees and the sky in the water. Wonderful. The western end of Lockhatry. Doc Loman by the Inversnade Hotel. Walking in Rob Roy country. The falls are located in the woods above Calendar. One can only marvel at the beauty of the Scottish countryside. However, it became time to return to England. Our adventure continues as we head south through eastern England. I hope you enjoyed Scotland. My travels, Neil Walker. <laughs>